Okay, we're on our way to Kings Park. Kings Park is uh, a real big place, just under a thousand acres of land, 990 acres to be precise. Kings Park was made up, oh, I think in 1831, but actually opened to the public in 1895, where it was actually named Perth Park. It changed its name to Kings Park in 1901. So that's where we're going to venture to. It's Saturday, the 10th of April, 2020. Easter Saturday, 24 degrees and 10 to 8 in the morning. <coughs> now that's probably Catherine's first introduction to being on the system as well. So we have audio from myself and from Catherine as well. So in Kings Park there's uh, botanical gardens, there's bushland and also parkland. It's used for various types of uh, events, so actually people can go and get married there. There's also uh, concerts and festivals and general gatherings. Posh restaurant there, Fraser's. Yeah, Fraser's. That's on Fraser's Avenue, isn't it? Fraser Avenue. And Fraser Avenue, as you'll see, has a lovely uh, avenue of trees down there. Do you know what trees they are, Catherine? Well, there might be ghosts, gums, white gums. There's a nice uh, gift, gift shop aspects. Have you bought anything from there before? Uh, I don't think so. Your mum has so when she's been visiting. Yeah, and Andy P. Mr P, yes, he bought some stuff there. There's the um, war, did you mention the war memorial, the eternal flame? No, but I'll be showing that. And obviously it used to be Aboriginal land as well, so they were using that area to, uh, to hunt as a hunting ground. Because it's off a, um, an edge, they used to drive uh, animals off there for hunting. Like in the Ice Age? Yes, with the mammoths. Oh, we had a little... Oh, you know, just a... Tay -tay. I think they just had too much stock or something, did they? Look like they had a full car park. Looks like everybody's out early. Yeah, well, today it's forecast to be 37 degrees, so... Um, like Catherine's just mentioned, uh, we're out. I mean, it's not even eight o'clock and we're out on the bikes because we don't want to be out on the bikes really any more than 34 degrees. Um, yeah, it's set to be 37. And then from that, uh, 11 o'clock, I think in the morning, it's going to be around about 34. So 10 o'clock is going to probably hit around 30 degrees. So we don't want to be out uh, and too hot in the obviously riding in the bikes. So 34 is probably my maximum for riding in, I suppose. And uh, we just want to go have a look round, and then come back, and then uh, stay out of the way of the heat as well, which is a bit. Um, it, it's not usual like this for uh, autumn time. I mean, we're probably are we mid autumn. Would you say now, Catherine? Uh, definitely mid autumn. Yeah. So to get a 37 degrees day, then that's. Uh, bit weird for this time of year because 37 we get in the summer months I mean we can get up to sort of 42 degrees in Perth so 37 is like a, a normal sort of potentially a normal summer's day so certainly not for autumn yesterday was about 34 was it 35 36 was it so we actually just stayed indoors yesterday um, Maintaining the uh, social uh, 
distancing as such and not going out and also we uh, we just didn't want to go out because it was too hot we still have no lockdown so hence we can still come out on the bikes Kings Park is open I've checked so uh, pretty much things are normal uh, just heard overnight that Australia has recorded another is it two deaths now or one death over the night for Australia so I think we're at 54 deaths as a total for Australia and um, we're actually not doing too bad with this whole Covid incident so uh, people are doing what they're supposed to do and uh, not venture out too, month, too much when they are they are staying apart with the 1.5 metre distancing and Australia hopefully they reckon we've sort of gone to the cusp of potential cases we've had less cases recorded so we're hoping that Australia's seen the worst of it already but then on the news we've just heard that um, some people who have had COVID-19 and been officially marked as uh, having been um, recovered from it have uh, been recorded of having it again so it can come back apparently Oh, they never totally cleared themselves of it, I don't know but I would have thought that would have been doctors, officials of actually saying they were, you know, yeah, recovered. Yeah, yeah, they would have had a negative, I suppose. It's a bit worrying, really. Yeah, so you might not be out of the woods even if you have it, and then supposedly have been recovered from it. You never know. But then again, some people are some people have recovered and been tested, and then they've have they got the um, antibodies. Uh, the antibodies for it, yeah. So. It's a weird virus and obviously it will affect people in different ways. So this is the uh, Wembley, the area that we first uh, rented in and I think that when we come back from King's Park we should just show um, where we uh, first arrived in January 2003. In the cave? Uh, well, Cambridge Atrium and then Dagley Street. Okay. So you can see it's not too far from where we live now. And that building up in front on the uh, behind the trees is King Edward Memorial Hospital where I previously worked, where I was uh, sponsored to come and work here. So when we lived on Dagley Street, which is just further back and turned we would have turned right at those lights and then another right. I used to cycle to work initially. I didn't have any parking. Even after a late shift, I cycled home. Yeah, which I wasn't keen about. So there's King Edward. You can just see it there behind that right-hand traffic light. No cases of COVID there so far, according to my old colleagues. But they're all prepared. And we'll also be going up Subiaco. Uh, one of the videos uh, I went to, uh, or through Subiaco. So we're actually going to be riding up the town. Subiaco's changed so much since we first arrived in uh, 2003. None of these buildings here were on the right or left. See an old building here. From uh, colonial times. And uh, this pub the grey looking building towards the left there where it says Hay Street that's uh, the Subiaco Hotel which I have mentioned before is the first pub we came to and uh, had our first beer expensive beer and currently closed at the moment because of uh, what's going on so uh, apparently they've got a bottle shop at the uh, rear of the pub and uh, selling their grog as they call uh, beer here in Australia. Always like Subiaco. 
So this is where, this is the suburb where King Edward Hospital is, and this road here, running across, is Bagot Road. And down there, to the right, on the right, is King Edward. People getting the coffees here. So apparently there's a tennis club in um, Kings Park and also a reservoir. I haven't seen a reservoir, but you know when we've looked down from the lookout to the city, Catherine, there's some water down there, isn't there? Yeah. So I wonder if that's the reservoir. Maybe. There's a... Uh, there's a bit called Jacob's Ladder, isn't there? Yeah, which is, uh, I don't know how many sort of stories of... Uh, Floors or steps, yeah, it's uh, quite steep, isn't it? And people either walk it or actually run up it, jog up it. So that's a real tester because it's obviously quite a high incline, isn't it? So it's several floors high, and then uh, people, yeah, walk or or run up it. So this is Kings Park, one of the entrances. So down behind us, if we turned right, there's um, a cafe and. Uh, a play park area as well so it's really good for kiddies and um, lots of uh, climbing bars and walkways for them there's an island there and um, some waterfalls water features so it's quite nice down there but this is the main event up here where we're going to looks like there's a few cyclists enjoying things back yeah, well, it would be good to have like, because it's, well, it's big, isn't it, like I mentioned before, it's nearly a thousand acres, so there's a fair bit of uh, track, as in, you know, like pathway tracks, isn't they, to cycle upon, I don't know if they can cycle on there, uh, but obviously on the roadside as well, they can cycle, so you could probably do a good circuit around here. I'm trying to maintain 40 kilometres an hour. And uh, the cyclists, I think we're going a little bit faster than that, so... I don't know what you're clocking, Catherine, what are you at? 40, 40, 45. So the aspects of King's Park, gallery shop it's called. They have uh, paintings and... Um, ceramics and all sorts of things to buy it's quite nice with uh, the souvenir type stuff it's quite tasteful stuff it's not nothing tacky in there and we're walking towards the uh, eternal flame as Catherine mentioned before and then just behind the eternal flame is the uh, memorial so on Anzac Day, which actually is this month in April, normally there would be gatherings here to uh, obviously honour the past people of wars. And uh, yeah, they'd be all round there in front of us, marking uh, their respects. This big tree here, this gum tree, was uh, planted by Queen Elizabeth the second, of course. Nineteen was it nineteen sixty something or other? Nineteen seventy four. This tree was planted by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II on the 27th of March 1954 to commemorate her visit to Perth with His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh. So 1954. So the city of Perth is just immediately to our left. We'll have a look at that in a short while. But downstairs beneath that memorial is uh, an entrance where there's uh, names uh, engraved on plaques for other people locally who 
people uh, lost their lives to war. So, just an example of the names on one of the plaques here, just beneath the memorial. Now it's a bit bright at the moment and obviously the sun rises in an easterly direction so we're facing that sort of way so uh, the sun is well and truly over the city as we look it's a little bit too bright maybe a bit too much for this camera and we're looking out onto South Perth there's a ferry leaving South Perth to go across to the city that's the Quanana Freeway what heads south and north and then the Swan River so we're walking through a segment of the Kings Park bushland various fauna, various bushes The amount of joggers we've seen so far, quite a lot of them, but this is really nice, this trail. We're going to make our way to the, uh, there's a glass bridge walkway, so we're going there. So this is the walkway to the glass bridge. So this bridge has been here for a long long time now it's recent times but um, it'd be at least 10 15 years maybe not quite 15 years but at least a decade and that building down there used to be a brewery Swan Brewery Company it's now apartments more joggers come walkers so this boab tree is a native tree to Australia also I think in South Africa as well but this tree actually didn't grow here it was transported we're thinking from the Northern Territories so this is Fraser Avenue with the ghost gum trees as Catherine mentioned earlier so I'm at the lookout from Kings Park to the um, city this place has been um, frequented by many many thousands of people to take photographs of this city it's probably the best vantage point to see the, the city and then onto the Swan River and that building over there is uh, Fraser's that's the restaurant all good do you enjoy the walk around? Ready for the off? Your feet's getting hot in those boats.
I like camel feet and boots. All right, we'll get off then. So that was Kings Park. Hope you enjoyed having a look around there with us. It's a really glorious place. Uh, really nice to spend some hours in there, having a picnic, having a stroll around, just taking in all the natural beauty. So what do you think to going to uh, Fraser's, Fraser's uh, restaurant, Catherine, sometime? Yeah. Yeah, that'll be all right, that. Are you paying? No. Oh. Oh, so who's going to pay? Uh, you. Well, if you're lucky, I'll take you. Not sure how we'll... Uh, I don't think it'll have to be a special occasion, will it? Because we've no special occasions to celebrate as yet now. You've had your birthday. I've just recently had mine, so... Um, I suppose that's the next big thing, isn't it? If it's open. Well, hopefully by then, that's going to be September, so hopefully uh, we're uh, back to normal by then. Oh, so I'm feeling a lot cooler now. So, uh, Sheila D, uh, I did the thing again, what I said I wouldn't do, and that was uh, walking around with my gear on, including my helmet. It's just that uh, it's a lot trickier to take all the stuff off to put back on, so I left it on, but hopefully I wasn't panting, or not too much anyhow. It's 29 degrees now, nine minutes past nine. And uh, yeah, time for us to be getting back home before it gets any hotter. We watched that Carl Pilkington um, comedy um, sitcom sick of it we watched all the episodes two series 12 episodes yesterday on uh, ABC iview you quite enjoyed it didn't you Catherine mm, quite funny. I didn't check actually but I reckon Ricky Gervais must have had some input it, to me if you, anyone's watched that afterlife it had uh, a similar sort of theme or similar throw to that um, so I wonder whether his mate gave him a hand with it, I'm not sure. Oh it's said uh, written by uh, Carl Pinkinson and something like Richard Yell, Yell wasn't it? Yee. Yee, yeah. Uh, but that's writing it though, I mean there's a difference between writing and producing so I reckon for the production of it I reckon Ricky Gervais may have had a, a helping hand but I don't know. It was good though, I enjoyed it. And this is one of the entrances and exits of uh, Kings Park. So again, avenue of uh, trees, palm trees this time. Palm trees are not native to Australia. They were introduced and um, not the best of trees to be planting really because uh, they just suck water. I got my... Nice bit of social distance in there. Quality. What? No. Not very good. They were well, well, 1.5 meters apart from each other. See, so they don't want the coffee shop to close down. You see, so that's why they're behaving in themselves because they love coffee. You've got to give humans incentives. We like dogs. We like puppies. We behave when we have good incentives. So we used to have these, uh, you know, the rumble strips all the way down here and a lot of people, uh, I think, stopped coming really because they didn't like the rumble strips. So uh, the shops and restaurants and all the rest, I think, complained to the council to say get them removed. So the rumble strips went. They were here for at least uh, well, a number of years anyway. Not when we first came. Oh, we've got the... What up? Meh, meh, meh. Giving it bloody full beam. Oh, 
Autobahn. But yeah, it's um I think the people in Subiaco around here are obviously a bit numptified when it comes to driving because that old deer the other week pulled out at the roundabout there, back there, so they don't seem to have any uh, presence of mind for other people around here. Oh, you're going to say, this is, well, oh, you'll see it. One, aren't you? this yeah. is 227 Cambridge Atrium where we first stopped, booked in by the um, hospital and uh, we were in that room, weren't we, up there? Corner. The top right hand corner yeah. there, yes yeah. we were. Hot box. Yeah, very hot. White building, but very hot inside. I have to say, the part owner of some of the apartments and manager, David Drake Brockman, our uh, introduction to Australia and Australian living and advising us to get uh, tax file numbers getting us on his computer and organising us and saying don't pay any more rent get yourself a car you can't be walking everywhere in this heat like we did rent a heap looking for a rental and he was a strata manager gave us a good reference and he put our name forward for the place we're going to next which is uh, Dagley Street, Wembley for our first um, Aussie home. Yeah, and he was very good to us, was David. Yeah, sadly passed away some years ago now, is it six years? Uh, 2015, early, wasn't it? So, five years then, yeah. Yeah, yeah so we lost a good friend there, he was really good to us. He had a very bad chest. Um, I think he was a premature baby and had a bad chest all his life, asthma and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. And alas, uh, that was. Can you hear me? Yeah. We thought we'd somehow dropped out there, so uh -huh. we lost a bit of audio. I just thought the thing died on me because it was saying it was, you know, low, but it's still going. So this is 133 Dagley Street, our first rental Aussie home. Uh, oh, they've taken the bars off the window, that's nice. Oh, um, health and safety, isn't it? <laughs> and uh, the windows there with the um, rainbows must be child's bedroom, that was our bedroom. That's the Very ones hot. to the right. Yeah, and looks like they've got some air con now, which is good. Those were the two bedrooms, weren't they, there on yep. the side? and a bathroom just across from this bedroom with the um, rainbows. But it was very dark inside, wasn't it? That's why I reference it towards being a cave, because it was very dark. Uh, old property. Very characterful, nice, but yeah, uh, not very nice in uh, natural light, because there was no natural light going through it, as you can see, though, very dark. Beautiful frangipanis outside. So if you've enjoyed that trip with us to Kings Park and that look around Kings Park as well and now a little bit of uh, reminiscing on uh, Nostalgia Street then uh, stay tuned, we've got more videos to come and if uh, you've enjoyed what we've seen so far or if it's the first video you've seen then uh, love you to subscribe and uh, stay tuned. So what's the temperature now? It's actually gone, gone up to 33 degrees now. 32. So yeah, it's picking up. It's 29 minutes past nine, Catherine, so uh, I reckon we're, well, we're not far from home anyhow, are we? But it's a good time to be home because it's going to start hitting that 34 mark, which is uncomfortable then for riding. All right, well, if you've enjoyed our ride out to Kings Park and back and uh, having a look around there, then uh, stick around. Please subscribe. We'd love you to continue to ride with us.